Okay, I'm Kristen Messerly with Cultural Outreach, and today I'll be interviewing a realtor in the San Diego market, Ricky Spencer Muhammad, and he's going to be sharing some insights with us that I think will be very relevant to our audience. So thank you so much, Ricky, for being on the call. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Pleasure so, to have you. Yeah, I'm really glad to have you and excited that this is your first time using FaceTime. So this is a big moment. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so my first question for you is, um, as an African-American and a realtor, from your perspective, are there areas that you think lenders or other realtors could improve in working with people of color in general? Absolutely. Um, I think... Um, there needs to be a, a higher level of education. I think within our community, um, we don't have that as many role models, as many uh, people in our, within our family have, who has purchased homes. And oftentimes the fear, they have fear, you know, they don't understand the, uh, the, the whole process, all the moving parts, you know, that takes place when purchasing a home. And a lot of fear keeps them out of out of the market. I think fear, I think uh, you know, credit, right? Um, you know, low low income. Um, um, it's the uh, disparity, the, you know, the uh, the disparity between how much uh, black people make compared to others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there's a level of trust. You know, oftentimes when a when they're speaking to a uh, a lender or to a real estate professional, uh, because they've been you know in my in my community, we've been ripped off, um, you know, a lot. We've been deceived. So oftentimes we follow with doubt and suspicion. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But it's the trust level. It's, it's not there, you know, and because of all of these different things, it kind of makes, you got to kind of navigate through all these different, um, all these different obstacles and yeah. you have to spend more time in terms of teaching because others know what we know not. Right. So ed education is education and fear. That, that's a, that's a big, that's a big thing. You know, we have uh, distrust because of the red line. The red lining happened actually to me. Oh, interesting. I, I, I know that. I know that. You Will know, you expand on that? What What did well, that look like was, for you? I, well, this is before I became an agent. This was back in 19, uh, early 1990s. Mm -hmm. We were doing a, a, uh, a project, and they told me uh, to do X, Y, and Z before the loan could be approved. I went and did that. They came up with something else. I went and did that. They came up with something. I did everything that they told me to do. They mm -hmm. kept on jumping over their hurdles, right? It's the final thing. It's the final one. They were throwing hurdles out there. They didn't think I would be able to jump over, but I would jump over them at the last minute. They just, they just denied the loan, right? Wow. And uh, um, we had a meeting with the bank. It, it was definitely, it was definitely redlining. I didn't pursue it the way mm -hmm. I should have pursued it, but they were, they were. Wanting, I went to another bank and we got the loan through. So whenever you talk about having been, uh, you know, someone being deceptive to you and that kind of building distrust, how do you, would you suggest people start to build trust again and be able to um, communicate that kind of education in a way that um, the, the community would be receptive to it? I think we need more of the uh, more programs as such as what you're doing, mm -hmm. more economic ministries. Uh, particularly, we need to we need to have some of these ministries where our people are. Mm -hmm. uh, many of us don't have the finances, uh, uh, the worth, or the, the go through college and whatnot to learn uh, a different, you know, different different uh, um, uh, financial. Um, what word am I? What word I need to use? We need to be more educated in that area. Mm -hmm. We need to, and it needs to be in an area where we're being reached. Oftentimes, uh, different workshops and uh, different professionals, they don't come to our community, mm -hmm. eat with us. Um, um, so I think that if we can have some organizations such as what you're providing, 
in maybe the churches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. That's where, that's where our people are at. I watched your uh, I watched your YouTube, uh, particularly the one where you spoke about the Hispanic millennials, mm -hmm. and and you were you were one hundred percent right when you said we talked about uh, uh, the millennials. They are more inclined to home ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about seventy percent of of the uh, Hispanic millennials are culturally connected. Mm -hmm. um, they see uh, the value of home ownership. Well, all of that is 100% opposite mm -hmm. in, in my community. Yeah. You know, with my people, we're not culturally connected. I do see a difference in uh, my approach mm -hmm. when I'm dealing with black people, Hispanics, and and, 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 and and Caucasian people. Yeah. My approach, my approach is different. Interesting. Uh, Will you expand on that a little bit of what that well, looks like? Well, uh, when I when I when I dealing with my people, I try to speak the language. Yeah. Right of the people. Mm -hmm. See, if I go in there, most of my people they have not been through college. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't have. They didn't get the opportunity to experience such higher education. Right. Yeah. So there's a level of distrust. Mm -hmm. is that, is, does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. There's a level, there's a level of distrust. So we need to we need to uh, address that problem from the root level. Yeah. Definitely. I think a lot of people don't realize that there is that distrust there and don't understand why it exists. And so, Absolutely. like you said, there's you know this we're people are communicating on one level and just not really understanding what the community that they're trying to reach, for example, the African-American community is needing to hear. Then no unity. See, mm -hmm. no unity. We, it's hard for us to change things because the unity is not there. We're so, we're so divided. So these are, these are, these are, uh, a, 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 a root. These are root problems. Mm -hmm. The unity. The system, yeah. the, 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 the system, we're not, we're so disconnected socially, we're disconnected politically, we're disconnected economically. Yeah. So if we can, if we can address some of those issues, you see what I'm saying? If we yeah. can teach on how valuable home ownership is, if we would address some of those issues, uh, I think, you know, that would be a step in the, in the right direction. You know, we have health problems, mm -hmm. see, you know, stress. Because of the, because of the income disparity, disparity, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have we have problems that you know a lot of other people just don't have, right? So it, it creates it creates it's like an action and a reaction. It's like a, a cause and effect. We know that these things exist in our community, but we never deal. We always deal with the effect. We mm -hmm. never really deal with the cause. Yeah. So, so we're dealing with we're dealing with branch knowledge. I believe that at some point we need to get to the root of this thing. See, yeah, we need to get to the root and pull that root up because if we're just dealing with the with the branches, you know, the problem is never it, it keeps it keeps growing. So I just want to just just put that out there. Yeah, it, it's, it's more than just that. buying a house. It's a comprehensive it's set it's of comp solutions that we need. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, Good. Ma that's very helpful. But anyway, I hope that was helpful to you and I really appreciate you. Let's do it again.